Today, I'm going to be sharing with you top secret information about five things I've learned about my 2014 V6 Mustang. I didn't say top three things, nor did I say anything about top seven things, because who the hell does top seven best of anything? Let's move on. If you are curious to know more about my baby pony, <laughs> stick around for some more insights because I might just change your perspective on the B6 Mustang. First up, let's talk about performance. I was surprised about how responsive the Cyclone engine is. With 305 hertz per at 6,500 RPMs and 280 pound feet of torque at 4,250 RPMs. Wow, you can read the brochure. Believe it or not, it offers an exciting driving experience from what you would originally expect from a stock vehicle. The acceleration is impressive, especially when you're pumping it in sport mode or banging through the gears with your MT82 transmission. It may not be a V8, but it definitely holds its own on the road. I will say though that it does lack mid-range range, 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 range. I will say though that this car does lack mid-range power, but you can feel it under the ass of your seat that this car has tremendous upside for additional power modifications. And I know this too because I have a pedal commander. I also have a really big cold air intake. And not only that, I have two beefy fucking mufflers in the back of the car that make a lot of noise. And with a lot of noise equals a lot of power, baby. But the thing that you just mentioned doesn't make any horse power. <sighs> take a deep breath and take a joke, bruh. That leads us into our next point, and that is aftermarket support. There are tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of performance and styling upgrades that you could do for your... For your... For your... For your... thought there was a ghost in my room. Someone grab my ass! Take 5,003. And there are tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of aftermarket options available for performance and styling upgrades for your S197 Mustang. And I would assume there's probably stuff for the S550 and like S95. I don't know. I would assume maybe. I mean, drop it down in the comment section down below if you know. Shops as an American Muscle, CJ Pony Parts, Lethal Performance, RTR, and even shit. eBay offers a variety of different options to sue whatever your heart desires. I've already dived into some interior mods, exterior mods, as well as various suspension upgrades, and I am excited to explore more options in the future. The possibilities are nearly endless, and you'll notice that when you first start modifying your Mustang. With that being said, we are jumping into the meme of the decade, and that is ride quality and handling. How you doing? The Mustang has a great balance between comfort and sportiness. It grips the road fairly well with the help of various aftermarket support options, and I absolutely love how it feels during turns. Although I would disagree with this statement if it was stock because it feels like you're driving around a big fucking yacht. On the flip side, the ride quality is surprisingly smooth for a sports car, making it perfect for both daily driving and weekend fun. The major issue the S197 Mustang encounters in comparison to its younger brothers is the difference between the solid rear axles and the independent rear end. When one wheel encounters a bump or uneven surface, the other wheel is affected due to the rigid connection. This can lead to a loss of traction, especially during sharp turns or uneven road conditions, as the wheels can't move independently to adjust to the terrain. This design is simpler and lighter, which can benefit straight line performance on the other hand, but also the durability as well. On the contrary though, the independent rear end on an S550 allows each wheel to respond to road conditions without affecting the other wheel, improving traction and grip. 
This independent movement allows for better handling over bumps and during hard cornering. Don't get me started about the fuel efficiency on this car because low key, it is shit. I'm just gonna get that out of the way. It is shit. Because how do you expect to balance out the power out of this car, which don't get me wrong, isn't really that bad, but I mean, it could be better with its shitty fuel economy. Like, I'm for real. My buddy's diesel turbo sounding jet engine truck has better fuel economy than what I have. Based off my seven years of ownership with this car, that I get a whopping 16.6 .6 miles per gallon. And lastly, we will touch up on technology and interior features because I just recently uploaded a video about this specific topic. So I highly recommend checking that out when you have a free moment, which I know you do because you have a free moment to watch this video. The touchscreen system is super dope in comparison to the boombox looking radio system from factory. And the sync sound system allows for hands-free calling and music streaming that I've never used. The stock speakers on this car are the best that I've ever experienced on a vehicle. No joke, I'm for real. Plus the interior space is comfortable. Well, at least for the people in the front. With good visibility and quality materials, it's a nice blend of sportiness and everyday usability. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Mustang content. Thank you guys all so much for watching and I will see you guys in the